quarterback position, I think, is still the most unique position in sports. And as it evolved, it was sort of Mr. American white male. It holds a special mythology in the hearts of a lot of white men. There's no other way to say it, but black quarterbacks were treated unfairly as the game of college football grew. Even after we started integration, there's no black middle linebackers, there's no black centers, there's no black quarterbacks, no black safeties. Why? Black guys ain't smart enough. You're not disciplined enough to play those positions. Those are the leadership positions. That was the myth. That was the myth. Once given the opportunity, black quarterbacks quickly proved that they could lead a team. In 1960, Sandy Stevens at the University of Minnesota became the first African-American quarterback to win a national championship. Stevens on the bootleg goes 26 yards to the Badger 39, legging it all along and running hard. In the early days, black quarterbacks were only going to be given the opportunity to lead teams with the support of progressive coaches. Coaches who were willing to endure pushback from some fans and boosters. Michigan State coach Duffy Darty, you know, he's got 20 African-American players, and he's got Jimmy Ray as an African-American quarterback. Jimmy Ray, a junior quarterback, only five feet, 10 inches tall, 170 pounds. There's not one singular thing that you can point to that says, hey, college football is integrated. But what Duffy Darty did with that 1966 team, it's a tremendous part of the evolution of race in college football. In the early 70s, black quarterbacks, the way they were viewed, they had to change positions. They came to a college, they wanted them to play defensive back, running back, play receiver, but you're not gonna play quarterback. Condridge Holloway, my hero at Tennessee, the artful Dodger, always told me that Coach Bryant said, I'd love to have you here, but at that time, I don't think we're ready for you as a quarterback. I'll take you as any other position. He was very appreciative of Coach Bryant being honest with him. Most of the great black athletes in the Deep South or the Southeast are staying home, taking the grants and aid here to play in Southeastern Conference schools. Did you ever have any misgivings or doubts about coming into one of the last of the Lily White Leagues? Uh, now that I look back on it, Jim, no, I did not. I didn't come here as a pioneer for anything as far as being black. Connors Holloway is the most inspiring figure to wear the orange uniform. And it expands even beyond that. When you talk to other athletes at other universities in the Southeastern Conference, it wasn't just that Connors played quarterback. It was the way that he played. It was the way that he conducted himself to this day. Connors Holloway of Huntsville, Alabama, quarterback for Tennessee. Going long, the man is there. Beautiful to the Alabama 30. It was tough to break through that paradigm of stereotype and lies. In 1988, 20% of the Division I quarterbacks were black. And even in the late 80s, it was still a story about black quarterbacks. Witness the Fiesta Bowl. The emergence of the black quarterback is certainly not a myth. It is happening, and it is a testament of the triumph of ability and determination over prejudice. The 1989 Fiesta Bowl saw for the first time two black quarterbacks leading their teams in a national championship game. Major Harris at West Virginia and Tony Rice at Notre Dame. It was a milestone in the story of the black quarterback. It's Notre Dame number one, West Virginia number three, only the eighth time in the last 50 years. Two unbeaten, untied teams have met in a bowl game to decide the national championship. The myth of the black quarterback not being competent is shattered when you see them win national championships, when you see them lead teams. Major Harris, a sophomore, looks to the end zone, has a man open, and Graham for a touchdown. We can't play this position if you just give us a shot. I think about a guy like Tony Rice at the University of Notre Dame. This is a guy who could have played any position he wanted to play for the most part, but the University of Notre Dame said, you're going to be our quarterback. He's on the cover of Sports Illustrated three times in one season, and he's the guy under center for the longest winning streak in the history of Notre Dame football. He breaks away from Parker, 45-50, and Rice is all the way forward and still on his feet and tripped up at the 32-yard line. Well, what does he do? He's the last guy to win a national championship for the University of Notre Dame. The most valuable player in today's game is Tony Rice. Join me in the signal honor of awarding the 1989 Heisman Memorial Trophy to Andre Ware of the University of Houston. Andre Ware was the first black quarterback to win the Heisman Trophy. He won it in an offense that threw the ball in a way that colleges had never seen before. 
Andre Ware rewrote the collegiate record books this year. He threw for more than 4,000 yards. In all, he set 17 individual passing records. Andre Ware was sort of a revelation, and to see a black quarterback operate like that and at a high level in 1989, it was revolutionary. After Michael Vick came along, asked Virginia Tech what happened there and how that helped them grow the university. And all of a sudden, now they're a national power. Now they're Michael Vick. Here's a snap, flagged off, we're offside on a blitz. Vick rolls to his left, rolling to his right now, runs with the football, cuts it back to the 40, to the 50-yard line, to the 45, Vick to the 40, Vick to the 30, Vick to the 20, and he is shoved out of bounds at the 12. When you see Vince Young on the college level, taking Texas to the national championship. That's one of those success stories. You step in a game with confidence, like, okay, they telling me I can't play this position? Okay, let me show you. And I used to have that so much growing up and playing on the pro level and the college level. It doesn't matter what color of your skin you are, it's just how much you prepare yourself to play the game of football and how much passion you have for the game. You can force him out of the pocket, but you're not going to beat him. Invincible. The winner is Lamar Jackson of University of Louisville. Lamar Jackson at 19 years old, being the youngest Heisman Trophy winner ever. That breaks down the barriers that were there before. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app and for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.